What's going on guys? Uh, this is John Daw with I Heart Anxiety and this is vlog number four. Um, felt pretty good today. Uh, I did wake up a little early, couldn't really go back to sleep. Kind of felt, uh, I don't know, restless. Um, I did a lot of thinking today on what I wanted to um, talk about and I came up with a story that I read and it was pretty moving. Um, it really breaks that, that stigma of mental illness and what people are capable of. Um, and today I want to read that story and give you my thoughts on it after. Um, but first, uh, let me do my anxiety update. Like I said, I woke up feeling a little restless. Um, couldn't go back to sleep. It was like 4.30, something like that. And uh, just got up, uh, made breakfast, uh, you know, took the dog out, that kind of stuff. Um, but today I really felt a little, like, uh, tired. Like, kind of, um, not lost, but kind of, you know, uh, man, I don't feel my best. Uh, I'm not as upbeat as I was yesterday. And this is the stuff that... I think this is what helps me with is knowing that, okay, I said I was going to do it, let's do it. And now that I'm here, now that I got up and going, it definitely made a difference. And it got me out of the rut. Gets me into a habit of success, I think. But um, these videos can't be too long. Um, I might make it a part two if it goes over. Uh, so let me go ahead and get to the story, but I just wanted to kind of give you a little heads, you know, a little heads up of where I'm at. Um, and to tell you, you know, just get up, get up and go, do it, just do it. You'll be, you'll be pleasantly surprised by the results, I think. But, um, but anyway, this story is called Successful and Schizophrenic by Elon Sachs. 30 years ago today, I was given a diagnosis of schizophrenia. My prognosis was grave. I would never live independently, hold a job, find a loving partner, get married. My home would be a board and care facility, my days spent watching TV in a room with other people debilitated by mental illness. I would work at menial jobs when my symptoms were quiet. Following my last psychiatric hospitalization at the age of 28, I was encouraged by a doctor to work as a cashier making change. If I could handle that, I was told we would reassess my ability to hold a more demanding position, perhaps even something full-time. Then I made a decision. I'm going to write the narrative of my life. Today, I'm a chaired professor at the University of Southern California Gold School of Law. I have an adjunct appointment in the Department of Psychiatry at the Medical School of University of California, San Diego, and I'm on the faculty of the New Center for Psychoanalysis, the MacArthur Foundation gave me a genius grant. Although I fought my diagnosis for many years, I came to accept that I have schizophrenia and I will be in treatment for the rest of my life. Indeed, excellent psychoanalytic, psychoanalytic treatment and medication have been critical to my success. What I refused to accept was my prognosis. Conventional psych... Uh, excuse me. Conventional psych... <laughs> I can't even say this word today. I'm, uh, I'm like so in like trying to get the story out. I, I'm like messing up. Conventional psychiatric thinking is the diagnostic categories say that people li like me don't exist. Either I don't have schizophrenia, please tell that to the delusions crowding my mind, or I couldn't have accomplished what I have, please tell that to the USC Committee, uh, Committee on Faculty Affairs. But I do and I have. And I have undertaken research with colleagues at USC and, US and UCLA to show that I am not alone. There are others with schizophrenia and such active symptoms as delusions and hallucinations who have significant academic and professional achievements. Over the last few years, my colleagues, including Stephen Martyr, Allison Hamilton, and Amy Cohen, and I have gathered 20 uh, research uh, subjects with high-functioning schizophrenia in Los Angeles. They have suffered from symptoms like mild delusions or hallucinatory behavior. Their average age was 40. Half were male, half were female, and more than half were minorities. All had high school diplomas and a majority either had or were working toward college or graduate degrees. They were graduate students, managers, technicians, and professors, including a doctor, lawyer, 
psychologist, and chief executive of a nonprofit group. At the same time, most were unmarried and childless, which is consistent with their diagnosis. My colleagues and I intend to do another study on people with schizophrenia who are high functioning in terms of the relationships. Marrying in my mid 40s, the best thing ever happened to me, was against all odds and following almost 18 years of not dating. More than three quarters had been hospitalized between two and five because of their illness, while three had never been admitted. How had these people with schizophrenia managed to succeed in their studies and had such high level jobs? We learned that in addition to medication and therapy, all the participants had developed techniques to keep their schizophrenia at bay. For some, these techniques were cognitive. An educator with a master's degree said he had learned to face his hallucinations and ask, what, what evidences do you have for that? Or is this just a perception problem? Another participant said, I hear derogatory voices all the time. You just gotta blow them off. Part of the vigilance about symptoms was identifying triggers to prevent a fuller blown experience of symptoms. Said a, uh, said a participant who works as a coordinator at a nonprofit group. For instance, if being with people in close quarters for too long can set off symptoms, build in some, build in some alone time when you travel with friends. Other techniques that our participants cited included controlling sensory inputs. For some, this meant keeping their living space simple, bare walls, no TV, only quiet music. While others, it meant distracting music. I'll listen to loud music if I don't want to hear things, said a participant who was a certified nurse's assistant. Still others mentioned exercise, a healthy diet, avoiding alcohol, and getting enough sleep. A belief in God and prayer also played a role for some. One of the most frequently mentioned techniques that helped our research participants manage their symptoms was work. Work has been an important part of who I am, said an educator in our group. When you become useful to an organization and feel respected in that organization, there's a there is a certain value in belonging there. This person works on the weekends too because of the distraction factor. In other words, by engaging in work, the crazy stuff often recedes to the sidelines. Personally, I reach out to my doctors, friends, and family whenever I start to feel like I'm slipping. I get great support from them. I eat comfort food, for me cereal, and listening to quiet music. I minimize all stimulation. Usually these techniques combined with more medication and therapy will make the symptoms pass but the work piece using my mind is my best defense. It keeps me focused, it keeps the demons at bay. My mind, I have come to say, is both my worst enemy and my best friend. That is why it is so distressing when doctors tell their participants to not expect to pursue fulfilling careers. Far too often, the conventional psychiatric approach to mental illness is to see clusters of symptoms that characterize people. According, accordingly, many psychiatrists hold the view that treating symptoms with medication is treating mental illness. But this fails to take into account individual strengths and capabilities, leading mental health professionals to underestimate what their participants can hope to achieve in the world. It's not just schizophrenia. Earlier this month, the Journal of Child Psychology and Psychiatry posted a study showing that a small group of people who were given diagnosis of autism and developmental disorder later stopped exhibiting symptoms. They seemed to have recovered through after years of behavioral ther uh, therapy and treatment. A recent New York Times Magazine article described a new company that hires high-functioning adults with autism, taking advantage of their unusual memory skills and attention to detail. I don't want to sound like a Pollyanna about schizophrenia and mental illness imposes real limitations, and it's important not to romanticize it. We can't all be noble, we can't all be noble laureates like John Nash of the movie A Beautiful Mind. But the seeds of creation and thinking may sometimes be found in mental illness, and people underestimate the power of the human brain to adapt and to create. An approach that looks for individual strengths in addition to considering symptoms could help dispel the pessimism surrounding mental illness. Finding the wellness within illness, as one with schizophrenia said, should be a therapeutic goal. Doctors should urge their patients to develop relationships and engage in meaningful work. They should encourage patients to find their own repertory of, excuse me, repertory of techniques to manage their symptoms and aim for a quality of life as they define it. And they should provide patients with resources, therapy, medication, and support to make these things happen. Every person has a unique gift or unique self to bring to the world, said one of our study participants. She expressed the reality that to those of us with schizophrenia and other mental illnesses, want what everybody else wants. 
in the words of Sigmund Freud, to work and to love. That was a very, very rather abrupt ending, but beautiful nonetheless. Um, wow. Um, first of all, that's a mouthful. She is a fantastic writer, and I was, you know, trying to keep up with my mind with what my mouth was saying a lot of times. There was a couple times at least that I messed those up. Um, but yeah, she's a phenomenal writer, and uh, I can, you know... I can just imagine what she can do on the uh, you know, academic level. And because she was, you know, haphazardly given the label of schizophrenia, they just kind of threw her in the bin and said, hey, you know, you've got schizophrenia. You're not really going to amount to much. You know, maybe you can be a cashier one day. But they didn't take into consideration her goals and her skills outside of you know what schizophrenia does to her she isn't schizophrenia she just happens to live with it so she has you know you know skills and uh and gifts and abilities outside of that diagnosis that's not who she is it's just what she has to live with and she fought and now she is a respected professor and at you know two of the biggest you know schools in the country and apparently there are at least 20 other people similar to her with schizophrenia. So what I wanted to do was put this out there that just because you know somebody or just because you see somebody that might have a mental illness, anxiety, depression, uh, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, they are managing with it. That's not who they are. That's not, you know, a label that you can just slap onto them and say, okay, well, this person has that. I got to treat them a certain way or they fit into this little box that I put them in. That's not how it works. I have anxiety, panic attacks, and vertigo. If you didn't see me within my symptoms, you'd never know. I have friends to this day who don't know that I have this. We, we can function just well. I mean, excuse me, we can function just fine. It's just that when we're having problems, it hits us like a ton of bricks. You know, and one of the biggest issues for us is that it's all mental. So we have to train ourselves to be mentally f strong. And even though it doesn't seem like it, some people with mental illness are actually some of the strongest mentally, you know, mentally fortified people that you'll ever meet because of what they deal with and what they have to get through on a daily basis. I mean, and this is not to, to minimize anybody's struggles because everybody has struggles and I'm not trying to compare but just because you don't have mental, you know, mental illness, but yet you have, you know, all these other problems, you know, poverty, uh, stressful work life, uh, you know, family death, just because you have something that's more common and you deal with it really well, that doesn't mean you're better than anyone else. Just like us with mental illness would never think that we're, you know, superior to you because we deal with these, you know, these demons that nobody can see and we still make it somehow through the day. But um, I just wanted to bring that up, and I want to do more stories. I want people to send more stories in. So if you have something, if you have something you're holding back, something that's some, you know, just inside you and it's, it's bugging you, maybe it's about your life, maybe it's about something that happened to someone you know, or just something that you, know, you kind of want to vent about or just bring up. Maybe it's a positive story. It doesn't matter. But if it pertains to mental illness and you want to share it, please, 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 please share it. You can email me or direct message me on any of the social media platforms I'm on. My email is iheartanxiety at gmail.com. And I know this was probably a longer video, but I really appreciate it. I might have, <laughs> this may be cut up into two, two, uh, two videos, but who knows. I appreciate you listening, and I appreciate, you know, if you made it through the entire video. So um, I love you guys. I hope that this finds you well, and that, you know, we can all, you know, just, just, Wake up tomorrow with the immense, uh, you know, immense um, encouragement that you know it, it'll be better than tomorrow as long as we, as long as we make it that way. But I appreciate you following along, and look out for blog, or excuse me, vlog number five tomorrow.